So, all right, so let's go into vowels just a little bit. Um, we'll talk about this from a, from a standpoint, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, pretty simple language. We're not going to really go into formants and any of that type of stuff, for those of you who know about those. But, um, everybody do this for me. You're going to start with an E, and you're going to sing from an, you're going to talk from an E to an A, like this. I want you to slowly go like this. Slowly just drop your jaw until you get to it all. So E, here we go. Alright, so on the spectrum, we've got quite a few vowels. E, say it. E. So if I sing sleep, 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 bring the corners of the mouth in, allow some of this soft tissue to be the last, the last thing that the sound hits before it leaves my mouth. It makes a huge difference in the warmth of my sound. Sleep, sleep, sleep. I'm not changing anything other than the corners. Okay, hear that? 
just warms it up quite a bit. Okay, everybody try to sing. Everybody sing "Sleep in Heavenly Peace." We're not going to do it very high. Um, let's do it here. How about here? Here we go. Ready? Sleep.
they are different. And particularly in this style, and particularly like if you sing uh, choral music like by Eric Whitaker, um, if you ever heard of Eric Whitaker's stuff, he's very particular about singing an E versus an A and realizing that there is a difference. And it's just a space difference. It's a slight difference, eh? Okay, just a little bit. More. The only thing that happens is the jaw drops just a little bit. Just a little bit. The corners are still in. It's that same exact vowel. Uh, same exact vowel shape, all right? It's just a little bit, little bit taller vowel with the end. Okay, so very similar, really nice and ringing. Ah, one of the grossest sounds, sounds in the human language. And we Americans really like ah, okay? We say it a lot. Had, bad, you know, whatever. I mean, they're all over the place. How in the heck do you sing an ah and make it sound decent? Here, here is, uh, here is kind of where yeah, here's kind of where I differ from a lot of choir directors. I really think it has to do all with the jaw. The jaw placement. Because when you say had, everybody say had? Had. The jaw really gets tense. As a general rule. Had. Say it. Had. It's pretty small. Feel it? Let's feel where your jaw is again. Had. 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 Okay. Now, can you let that jaw go to that 10 degree plane? Had. 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 Okay. Not, I don't want hot. That's, that's British. We don't want that. So it's not hot. It's had. And the jaw relaxes. Once you let that jaw relax, and all of a sudden, all the tension comes out of that vowel, and you can actually sing that vowel. All right? Uh, yeah, have yourself. It's in a different song. Um, let's sing it. Why not? kids to wrap their heads around. It's the hardest one for me to teach my high school kids. It really is. It's just a, it's an ugly vowel inherently. So you got to really think about relaxing that jaw and getting the corners in. One more time. Uh, Good. That's it. You got it. Very nice. You guys are so fast. I love it. All right. Aw. Oh. Everybody say ah. Ah. Aw. 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 So the corners are out and there's kind of a bell shape to this. Think about your lips as a trombone bell. Okay? So instead of this, ah, 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 ah. There's kind of a bell shape to that, and it's a conical shaped bell. Okay? And that's what really helps to eject that and warm it up and keep it nice and tall. So the ah bell, particularly if you're a lower voice, really, the, 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 the corners of the mouth are so important for this vowel. All right. Secondly, just like the app, make sure that your jaw is in that, that ten degree that ten degree spot. Okay. For me, if I'm thinking if I'm thinking about and I'm teaching it very quickly, I tell my kids aim all your vowels at the floor. Okay, without moving your head. So not this. Oh, but oh, 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 ah. Uh, all of those have just a little bit of a feeling like I'm shaping them and sending them towards the floor rather than straight out. Alright, so let's try a little bit. Can you see we got a lot of these? How about Silent Night? They're all over the place. Let's do it. Go ahead and sit nice and tall, guys. Here we go. Let's try that. Corners in, bell shape, and then just a little bit of that 10 degree angle. One and two and go. Silent Night. Good, now take out the bell shape. Almost 
if you go through and look, I mean, you know, we, we as arrangers pick texts that have a lot of that vowel in it. Okay? As composers, we come up with the lyrics that have a lot of this vowel in it because it's the it's the most beautiful vowel to say, usually. Alright? It has a lot of space to it, it has a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of size to it, so you can sing it loud. It's pretty easy to project. Alright, so that's why it's such an important one. We want to really make sure it's unified. Now, I'm going to kind of do this so you can see it. It's, they're a little bit different. They don't quite all line up. But the other side of the spectrum, ooh, ugh, it's kind of a tough one to put it together. I mean, these kind of, kind of go together. Oh, uh, and then again, aw, except this one, I'm going to spell like that. All right? This is the same thing. Not only are you dropping your jaw, so if yeah, but now you're going to use lips for all of them. Okay? So, do it for me. Lips all the way. One more time. Okay? So the corners are always in. So this is the lip side of the spectrum. You got the non lip side of the spectrum, which we added corners to everything, all right? But this one is the lip side of the spectrum. So, ooh, you must use your lips. There must be that conical shaped feeling to your lips to actually get a new sound. Otherwise, it's ooh, all right? It's one of the biggest mistakes because it's just so easy for us to kind of sing ooh, and it kind of sounds like an ooh, but it doesn't sound exactly like an ooh. There's a difference there, and that difference means getting that ooh, those lips, those corners, all the way out. Okay, you can you can tell just by looking in the mirror. It's easy for you to fix. All you gotta do is just look in the mirror and say, "What does my ooh look like?" Well, if it looks like this, you're probably not really singing a new. <laughs> okay, so ooh, all the way out there. Don't be shy about getting those lips all the way out. Let's try it. Just an exercise, guys. Here we go. One, two, five, four, three, two, one, and ooh. Ready and go. Good, now kind of go there. Let's, let's go in the part, part way. Ready and go. Good, this time I want you to start kind of, and then by the time you get to the last note, be all the way there. Here we go, ready? Good. As a singer, can you hear what that does? It's a huge difference in resonance. And more importantly, it starts to sound like a, a single guy. It sounds, it sounds to sound like a choir. Oohs, if they're taught correctly, are the easiest to unify of all the sounds. If you hear, if you, um, if a choir teacher knows what they're teaching, they'll start with the ooh vowel. Okay, because it's the easiest to unify. It's the easiest to find that, that, that unit sound. Okay, ooh is in book. The key is exactly like this. I, I lean this one towards an E. I'm going to lean this one towards an oo. All right, so for instance, um, good, good, good tidings, sweet, good tidings, sing over that for me, and good tidings, we bring to you and your king. Good, time. good, ready? Good tidings, we bring. Not this time, sing. Good, 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 good. good. Okay, see, see what I'm doing? Just taking that good and putting a little ooh in it, and it unifies the sound. Good, try it. Good, good tidings. Good tidings we bring. So that's, that's the key with the U. O, same thing as the U. You've got to get your lips out there, guys. O is just a purely a matter of, it's got to look like an O, like this. So if you go look in the mirror, if it doesn't look like an O, it's probably not going to sound like an O. O, 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 okay? Other little helpful hint on this, think of the plane on this one as well, okay? O, 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 O. Big difference. Big difference in the resonance of the sound. Okay, let's try a couple of these. Um, <laughs> how about, uh, let's sing O Holy Night, just the first three notes. Here we go. O Holy Night. One, two, three, go. O Holy Night. Kind of get 
get lazy with your O, still sing an O, but get a little lazy with it. One, back three rows, go. Oh, holy night. Good. Now, and now I'm going to let the front three rows hear this change. All right? I want you to start bad, and by the time you get to whole, then you're to a good O. Ready? One, two, three, and. Oh, holy night. Now, did you notice that the, the size of the sound, the volume of the sound, about triple when they unified that sound? Isn't that weird? It's, it's one of the cool things about vowels. These, again, so similar here, there's really not a vowel that kind of lines up with that on the spectrum. Oh, as in love, or is it? Love. 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 This is one that we have a, we have a tendency to say with absolutely no lips. All right? When we say, I love you, we, we, we say it with almost no lips. When you sing it, you got to sing it with lips, otherwise it's a really disgusting vowel. Okay? <laughs> so, um, say, um, the. The. One of the most common of all, right? The. 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 Okay? Feel the difference? <coughs> and you can hear the resonance in the room, too. It's just a matter of, again, getting that, getting that trumpet to look. Look which, it's on this, it's on this lippy side. So if we don't use lips, we're pretty much, you know, pretty much going to sing another vowel. Okay, so, the, love. The, love. You feel very nice. And the last one is aw with lips. Aw, aw, aw. We usually use this, use this what, no, excuse me, most commonly with the word God. Say that. God. All right, feel it. God. 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 Just a little bit more height to it, a little bit more narrowness to it. Okay, new vowel. Round. Round. Next cop. Next next concept. Have a seat. Now, a lot of the time we combine vowels. All right, and a combined vowel is a diphthong, one of the great words of all time. Right? So fun to say. Even more fun to spell correctly. Go check it out in your in your uh, in your uh, 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 dictionary at home. It's a very fun one to try to spell correctly. Diphthong purely means you have two vowels. Okay, so. Like night, okay, silent night, silent night. You actually have two diphthongs right off the bat, okay? Round is actually a triphthong. You got three in there. Ra, o, un. Ra, o, un, if you really just slow it down, okay? So, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. So, all of those, ait. Are all the diphthongs, and then when you get to round, there's actually three in there. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, they're the exact same vowels you just talked about up here. Okay, so you got an a, followed by an e. So you, you obey all the rules: a corners in, jaw in, e corners in. All right, and make sure you get all the way to e. However, with a diphthong, the rule is this: the first sound, as a singer, all right, that first sound, it's 90% of the length. The last, the last sound gets 10%. So if I were to slow it down and really, really do this slowly so you could hear it, it would be silent night, holy night. Okay, so just the last 10% is going to get that, that E, but it does come in there, all right? So sit up nice and tall, try that. Everybody just back on melody for a little bit. Here we go, ready? One and two and go. Yeah, Amazing Grace has a lot of them. 
there's a lot in there, but, but this one, you know, every, you, the, uh, the old tradition was how no brown how, right? That's all trip songs actually. How no brown cow. So I'm trying to give you all of them, to overdo it a little bit. But the idea being, again, you hold that primary vowel 90% of the time, whatever's left, whether it's a uh, diphthong or triphthong, give the last 10% to. Okay? Very nice.